Hi everyone, Erin here today. I want to show you how to make a really fun bookmark using the same Magnifique March Kit. And so this is one side of the bookmark, um, and I'm going to show you how to do basically recreate the kind of textures I've created here on the other side. Now I'm not going to use this bookmark, I'm actually going to sandwich two pieces of paper together and then add in this really cute little tassel, and I'll show you how I'm going to kind of glam it up. This looks really funny together right now. i got to grunge this up a bit. So. Stick with me and I will show you the rest. So I started using, and then for the front side of this card, I used the, I don't even know what page this is, but this is one of the pages out of there. I cut this section off. So for today, I'm gonna cut this section right here off. And I wanna make sure I have the same dimensions, so I'm going to measure. So I did a three and a half inch wide. I really ballparked it when I made the first tag, so I have to remeasure all my things to make sure I get it correctly. I'm just gonna cut it. I don't need any more of that paper because we're gonna use some of the cool, um, oh, I can't even think of the word now, dictionary paper. We're gonna use that for some and you can see it kind of popping in the side there. Now, how long did I think this? I made my tag. I use my cutter to measure all the time. So I made my tag seven. So I'm gonna cut off seven. So here we go. Seven. Okay, so now how did I get the tag like effort? I'm gonna flip it over and I line it up so, so you can see the whole thing. Let me get this out of the way so I don't get it. So I'm gonna line it up and basically I line it up on the even numbers. So since this was even three and a half, I'm gonna use each half as a marker. Now for this particular tag, it's how far I went in. And so I went in one, two, and a half. So basically I went in an inch and a quarter. I'm, I'm counting by the number of bars I went across, which each is a quarter. So half, half, and a quarter. So that would be one and a quarter. So I'm gonna measure that. So half, half, and a quarter. And I'm basically measuring from the outside of the tag in. So half, half, and a quarter. And that gives me the same dimension as the first tag I made. So therefore, I'm cutting at the same point. So line that up a little evenly. So there it is, see how it lines up together? And then how far did I cut down? I just picked the nearest line that went across, which was here. I just went in, and I'm, use, I'm marking on the back side because you're not gonna see the marks I made. So it becomes invisible in a lot of ways. And I'm just gonna get some scissors, and I just cut one side to the other. Simple as that. And there's my tag. And therefore, these guys will line up. It'll look like this, though. So I'll make it look like this. And that'll be what my tag looks like. And if it's a little bit off, you know what? It just adds some fun texture, but I try to be as pretty exact as possible on that. So let me put these away. All right, so next step, what did I do? I took some, I need a paintbrush for this. Let me grab my paintbrush. I took some 3D glass gel. Let's grab the side here. And I took some of the paint. Now this was not in the kit, but any, and this is a 3D gloss. So actually this is the reason why this is all puffed up is because it's a 3D and it dries transparent. And I added some of the cool kind of pinkish paint that we got and then our tissue paper. And all I'm gonna do here is just tear up strips. You don't need to be too exact. And again, we're using this side because I do want some color in here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of the paint, lightly go over, and yeah, I'm gonna blend my gloss and stuff. Probably could do this in another container, but you know what? Whatever. Put a little smear of the gloss gel down. Give this something to stick to. Eh, it's sticking my finger. And then I'm gonna go over this again. So I can go ahead and put some gloss down in some other places so it just gives it a binding place. I'm also gonna go in with some of the mist that we got, and this was actually just a powder inside that we added water. So I'm gonna mist and tear, and I don't like having flat corners, so I like leaving tear marks. And I'm gonna do it kind of in a couple of different spots. I'm gonna do it along here, and just give it, I'm gonna go ahead and mist some here, and just be grungy about it, don't worry. In a paint, and that's how I got a really kind of purpley effect. From the original paper, that looked more brown than anything. I missed some of this. Let's move the cap out of the way. And just kind of go in and 
just adding layers and textures. I didn't want this to be too bulky, which is why I'm not adding cool flowers and stuff. I want some more layers on here. You may not see every single layer. I don't want this sticking off the edge. I'm going to tuck it in. over it. Now I'm just playing with the mediums that were given to me and having fun. It's shorter. Cool, right? And now I have my heat gun and just kind of set it up a little bit. Okay. Let's kind of rest this off to the side there. Again. All right, so in our kit, we also had a bunch of chipboard. So I'm going to take one of the chipboard butterflies and I took one butterfly on this one. It's actually here. And I'm gonna show you how I made the identical chip butterflies on that. I didn't do anything to prep my chipboard. I just took the chipboard and I took a bunch of the 3D gloss gel. And on this one, I did the butterfly going up and I did the word on the side. So for this tag, I, you know, I've got two different other butterflies and I'm really kind of liking, I don't know. Maybe I'll use both and I'll just do an impression of one. Let's try that. So we're gonna change it up a little bit. This one I actually did two impressions and this one I'm gonna do two butterflies and do this impression in the middle. I don't know if I wanna do, the word on this one. I think I just want to have the butterflies flying up because I have a word on this side. I'm going to avoid the word on this one. So let's try that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big honk of the gloss gel. So there and there. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this guy in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to gloss him over. Make sure he's not just to stick him down most than anything. I don't want to use too much gloss because I don't want him to be coated too much. Just some texture on them. Okay. Now for this guy, because this guy is actually gonna end up using, we're gonna use him as like a stencil. So this one I really want to coat in and pretty much stick in the butterfly's wings. All little nooks and crannies. Really get in there good. Coat it well, nice and thick. And again, this is a mixed media, it does not need to be perfect. So we're going with that. Carefully lift it up. See, I left kind of a cool impression. We're going to carry our butterfly over here and just use this to glue it down. So lay some down, put in, lay it down. And there we go. And just to kind of keep the look of the butterfly, get rid of some of the excess. And there we go. Now I'm going to kind of heat set this up a bit more. Alright, now I'm going to add in some mist. I'm going to mist this up. And now I'm going to add in some of these cool little guys. And I'm just going to use my fingers and I'm just going to kind of dot it around. So I want to have some in the middle of this little guy, a butterfly. Let's say I want to have, so we're going to put this, I should add some more. I'm going to add some more gloss gel over here. Just to stick to and bind to. I'm gonna have a splotch over here. It's okay if it's a little lumpy. Getting my gloss gel all gross inside. That's okay. I want some on here. Just kind of playing with where I want some of this pretty stuff to go. And then we'll layer it up. So again, I'm just gonna take this I think it's kind of like an embossing powder, but I'm not 100% because there's larger flakes in there too. So I'm truly kind of playing with it like it's an embossing powder. And just having fun. Now I'm going to heat set the crap out of this thing to really make sure that it seizes in. And I want to get, sorry, I'm just covering this. And I'm not worried about what's on my, my uh, mat. I'll clean this all later. Um, I really want to make sure that all of the 3D gel bubbles and sizzles and crackles. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of that on this one. I'm gonna lift it up so you can see really good and make sure I don't burn my hands. I'll hold the other end. And there it is, there's the bubbles. And here it's sizzling. That's what I want, lots of good texture. So keep heat setting this sucker in. Okay, it's for the most part dry, but not 100% and that's fine. So I'm gonna go in and just to really kind of capture where these butterflies are, I'm gonna stamp them. So now they can kind of pop out a bit more. Okay, and down here too. This little 
Fun Butterfly, just so they kind of pop out a bit more. I'm not hiding. It's okay if the mist gets a little elsewhere, and I'm going to keep set this in. Alright, so now I'm going to go in with the gelato. And just add it's a little hot and careful. <laughs> Don't make that mistake with me. Alright, so I'm going to go in, and again, I'm going to kind of add some more color and texture. I didn't do any gelato on this one, so this is kind of a new one on this side. I'm just kind of adding it in here and there, just to give it some more color. And then to kind of help blend it all, add some more mist. I'm just shaking it up to make sure all the mica powder. I'm just having fun with it. Really kind of getting it all blamey, so it's starting to get deeper colors now. I think I'm going to rub in some, just to give it kind of cool. This one I think I heat set in a little bit too much, but that's okay. Just rub it in. Alright, here we go. Okay, so again, it's still pretty hot, but I want to add some more layers. Now, how I got the darkness in here is I just took a Copic marker and I went through and kind of traced the butterflies. So, yeah, it's pretty good to touch. So, I'm just going to trace the outside of the butterflies just to give them some more definition. Don't worry about being too persnickety because you're about to see a really cool effect here in a minute. Go in the middle, kind of give it the butterfly effect. Maybe add some. This one doesn't really hide any. Same thing here, trace it. And go for the body. Now this one you're gonna have to kind of imagine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight it. So you don't have a true butterfly to trace. So here is the body on this one and you're just gonna have to remember kind of where the pieces were. So I'm using this one as my guide. Here it kind of comes out. This is kind of the shape of the butterfly. And again, it doesn't have to be super persnickety. I'm going to add some little, you know, just be rough with it. It's okay. Because now, watch, we're going to have some fun. Take your mist again. And mist it. And it blends the black in and creates a really kind of cool. And if you feel like, like I missed it too much there, you can take, take a paper towel. Come in. Kind of blot it, go back in with your marker. Maybe you were a little too rough with it. And just give it some more definition. You want to make sure you kind of have that definition there of where the butterfly is. Um, but you want it to be a blended thing. So maybe I'll heat set. So let's heat set a little bit now. So what it also does is it adds in the dar darkness. If you didn't have a dark contrast, you had purple and purple and purple, you would end up missing the look of the butterfly and it would fade in. Kind of what's happening here. So this one, it's got the dark, but not having a light contrast. So I need to come in and add some light so you can really kind of make that pop and make it shine. Otherwise, it just kind of fades into your project and you can't see it very well. So I need to add a light color, probably a white or maybe even this light ink to really make it pop. So I'm gonna add a little bit more something here. And some of these, the body got kind of lost. And some and these, and again, I don't want to make it too harsh. But as I sprayed, it kind of blended. And I'm probably gonna spray again. I'm gonna heat set for a second and spray. So just to give it heat set for a second and ten too. So heat set for one sec and then I'll spray it in. I don't want it to get too defined. There we go. Now it kind of adds that illusion. There we go. So now I want to go in and really create a little bit more of a lightness to these. Kind of like what I need to do with this one. So I'm just gonna come in and lightly tap with the ink just to bring out the lightness of the raised. I might even do it on here. I don't want to overdo it because I want to keep the high, the light on the high, the higher stuff, and the dark on the low. So I just very lightly, the other way you can do it is you can put it on your finger and you can go in lightly on your finger. And do it. I think I like this way better. Just go in lightly. Just to catch the high. See? See how it makes it kind of pop? You're just catching the highs. I'm just going to do it lightly. That way it doesn't fade. The lows, the darks on the bottom, on the, the, the 
the creases, I guess so to say, so in the depths of, because there is a little bit of some depth here. It's not too bulky. And then the light stuff is on the high. You don't want to cover everything. You don't want it to be like all white. So really it doesn't have enough darkness around it. So I'm going to add some depth, which means I'm going to have to redo the lightness. You know what? It's okay. Redo over these things. So notice how I'm going kind of around it and tracing it. And then when I spray it, it's going to kind of blend in. And it'll give that depth that I'm missing right now on it. Okay, so I'm going to heat set this for a second. Just a second. You know what? I need to add some in the O. A little bit in these creases. I don't want to miss what the word is saying. There, and I don't think I did that too well the first time. Alright, so now spray it. Ah, that looks better. It's better already. Much better. Now it doesn't fade so much into the background. Um, if you're not using a black as a base, another background color you can use is brown, like a dark brown or even a lighter brown. Um, so it just adds you want, if you have a light and need a dark, you need a contrasting color, not just light and dark purple, but you really do need kind of a contrasting color to help set. And then a lighter contrasting color. Um, white works really good. This is such a light pink color ink that came in our kit. And it really does work well. So there you go. Pretty nifty swifty. All right, so here's the two pieces of our tag that are gonna go like this. We're gonna kind of mesh together. Now, in our kit, I have this piece, and I have this piece, and I have this piece. So I'm gonna use some of, just to really grunge this up a bit, really get in here. Missed it. Really kind of put this all, pick up the, lovely bits of stuff that I have going on on my mat. Why not? It's already there. Add some paint to this guy. I think this is a leather. And I don't care if it gets kind of mucked up. You know what? I take that back. I'm going to need some glass shell because I don't want this to be super, super brilliant. I want it to kind of get a little bit mucky looking. I want it to be a grunge. I do want this latch to work though. Does this have kind of a latch you feel? I'm going to coat this all up. You know, maybe we'll add some of the powder on this. You know, I love getting my fingers messy. It's just part of who I am. Okay. Good. Okay, so, got the powder on there. I'm going to kind of heat set this up a bit. Flip it so we can get some more. I think we need some more glaze. Careful, this will probably be hot. You know what? I'm gonna use my brush first because I do not want to burn my finger on that metal I just heated. It's a, it's an embot or a heat, but it's got all these flecks. So truly, I'm gonna have to look at what the kit said. We didn't really get a whole lot of information when the kit came to us. Okay, I'm gonna heat set this again. All right, so it's a mist on here. Ooh, look at smoke. <laughs> all right, really kind of get in there and get in there with the mist. Get in there with all this stuff. Really want to get in all these nooks and crannies in here. Like I, said, I think this is a leather. It just, you know, it's too stark white against all the messy goodness. This is why I love a craft mat. Look how easy this comes up now. I heat set all that onto the craft mat. Oof, gone. So, Nyx Media is messy. That's the beauty of it. Love it. Alright, so keep playing. Okay, so. That kind of dry for a minute. Move my brush. Probably gonna end up using some more of this after I get. Now, how am I gonna do this mess? I'm going to I like the chain. I kind of like the chain look on this. I think what I'm gonna do. Okay, it's not hot. I'm to test it. 
This is a little bit warm down here, but. Should have stuck this on, okay. One, two. There we go. Aw, man. Okay, well that works. So I've got a chain, and this is attached. In that process, I ended up opening up a loop and it came undone, but that's okay. We just need a single chain. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna add something fun to kind of grunge this up a bit more. We're gonna glue this rope on this connection. Beacon is my go-to adhesive for anything that's kind of glue, wet glue. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, just to kind of cover this up and also help to bind it, I'm gonna use the rope and then go around it. So I'm gonna glue this sucker up and it'll also help keep the chain secured. I'm gonna add a ton of glue on this side and then wrap it. Start at the bottom. And just wrap it. And this just seems like it's like a, a twine, a really thick jute. But if it's missy, you know, mix mosh and just kind of all over the place. That's the beauty of this. Love it. Okay. Ah, see, stuff goes everywhere when you're working. Okay, so I really want to get in there and make sure it's glued in place. And you know what's next? <laughs> more of that purple stuff. I love that. Alright, so I'm going to add some more of my gloss gel. We're going to do one side at a time. So let's add some to here. It's okay if I go over and add extra. No big deal. Okay. Add some of this fun stuff on there. And yeah, we're gonna mist it after, so it's all good. good coat and heat set. Alright, it's not dry, I'm not worried about it. I'm just gonna do the other side. Again, I want this to have this messy look, so. More powdery stuff. Still can't tell what this is, but it's cool. I love it. As I'm heat setting, I'm going to go ahead and throw some spray on there just to see what happens. flower out of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, and these were flowers from the kit, and we're going to put a flower on either end and kind of make like a flower medallion with our tassel. All of this is going to stick outside. We're going to have a little bit of a dangle. So this is part of the dangly end right here because part of this chain is going to be inside. So we're just going to add some white gesso. This is just what I have. I have a, what's on hand for me right now. And I'm just going to add a base layer of white gesso the flowers because we don't want it to be these colors. It looks kind of funny. So I'm going to start with the back because you are going to kind of see a little bit of the inside of it. And that's not the look we're going for. I want these colors. Again, we're going to kind of layer and paint it up so it's fine. I'm not too worried about how much I'm covering. If there's a little bit left because we're going to add some more layers of paint and stuff. I just want to add this more of a clean base. So here's the first one that's going to the way. And here's the second one. And I picked two more flat flowers versus very three-dimensional kind of a flower. I didn't want this to be too, too puffy. So I'm just kind of playing to go along. Get in there, all nuts and crannies. And then we're going to heat set these. So 
should have done one side and the other, that's okay. I'm more worried about the front than I am the back. I just want to give a little bit of a back color. So just kind of whiting it out. Way. Might need to add some more later. There we go. And then heat that. Alright, so I did both sides. I'm gonna kind of wipe up a little bit of the table now. I tell you what, I get messy. <laughs> I can't tell. Goodness for craft mats. Yeah, and it's a little bit warm. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty well set. I'm not too worried about being final. I'm gonna get some of these little extra dangles. Here. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to come in with, where's our paint? Paint. I think I'm done with our gloss gel, so I'm just going to wipe my brush off so it's a little bit less glossy. Cover this guy up. There we go. And I'm just going to come in, get some of those pretty textures. There's a little bit of a glitter in this too. It's kind of cool. Something in it. You can tell from the lid, it's got a little bit of a sheen color. So I'm gonna come in here, the paint, and paint it up. Kind of going for the same effect I did with the, the base of the bookmark. Okay, so I'm gonna do this side, kind of heat set it, and then flip it over and paint the other side. Add a little bit of spray mist. Set that in. Well, this time I'm going to be a little careful. I'm going to use the gesso in the middle to create kind of the ball effect. Oh, this will work. I haven't tried it with the gesso. To add the purple in the middle. The purple, this stuff. Let's see if I can do a really good job of just sticking it in the middle. Trying to keep a lump in the middle. Spray it a tiny bit. Well, oh, so much for a lump in the middle, that's okay. So I kind of overheated this one and turned into a different color, but we'll just end up spraying it over. I want to add some darkness to this, so I'm going to kind of do the same effect I did with the other one and just kind of go around, create a darkness section in here. Kind of go up some of the petal lines of where the petals would be. So you can kind of see them just to give a definition of where it is. And here, kind of go around with the edge of the center. Get some petal lines. And then you know what we're doing next. We're misting it. Yeah, so it looks like a flower. It should blend nicely. Little mist, and I think we got it. Layers is our friend. Layers, layers, layers. Okay. Now you could let all these air dry in between each session. Like at this point, I may step away for a half an hour or so and let it air dry. But I want to go ahead and glue it to this and give get my effect. So back to my beacon. One on one side, one on the other. kind of smushing it down. Make sure it gets that effect. It's okay if it kind of folds in. I kind of want that. You know what? And sometimes I do a whole bunch of work and realize, oh, that isn't really what I want to do. And I end up covering it all up. Kind of like what I'm doing with these flowers. The middle section I'm putting the flowers on. That's okay because you're going to see it from the side a little bit. It's all good. Really just kind of I'm sandwiching with my hands. Kind of setting it. And don't worry about it if you mess it up. There's really no messing up with this. Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add some highlights using my lovely finger method. Just picking up some 
I might add a better center to this because that one's got a good center, but that one really doesn't. So I think I'm going to add a better center. I have these pearls that came with the kit and I'm going to use one of them as my center. Now to make sure, because this is going to get, you know, pushed around, it's going to be sticking out. I really want to make sure this sticks well. So back to my beacon. Make sure it doesn't get everywhere. The other side has a cool center, so I'm not worried. But now I got to grungeify this up a bit. It looks a little plain. Well, actually, you know what? Eh, a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit. Should just in the paint first. It's okay. I'll paint over that. Do layers of both. But now I can do the purple on that. I'll stick. Now what we're going to do is we're going to glue this whole thing together and it'll be done. I got to clean up and take some good photos. Okay, so starting off, we are going to add this into the center. I want it to hang out a bit. So we're going to add a layer of glue going down the middle here. And we're going to sandwich this thing. And then we're going to glue, put a lot of glue around the edge, not too close to the edge because it's going to spurt out and then bunch in the middle. Really want this thing to press well together. There we go. When the whole thing is dry, 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 I'll probably go back and do a fixative on it and really make sure that it doesn't flake off into my book and get it all kinds of gross. Make sure this is in the center. Really Press it down. So it's kind of a bulky bookmark, but you know what? It's an artsy bookmark. It's what it is. And so I will have some better pictures, but this is the gist of what our lovely little bookmark looks like. Take a look at that. Pretty cool, huh? And then here's our lovely little dangle that comes off of it. So thanks for joining me. Come back. Don't forget to subscribe and I will catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.